ay uh, UPLB Organic Agriculture Technologies. Alam ko po ay hindi lang naman kami ang gumagawa na pag-aaral tungkol sa mga technologies for organic agriculture. But, uh, and ang uh, presentation ko po will not be able was will not be able to cover all the technologies that we are are being developed at UPLB. This the presentation I will give will deal more with the current, the more current technologies that we are doing, and even some of them are not yet mature technologies, if you would call them. Some are still at the uh, R and D stage. Pinag-aaralan pa rin po. First, I'd like to uh, give acknowledgement to our major funding agencies. Kung wala po sila, wala po kami magagawang pag-research. The DA Bureau of Agricultural Research, the DOST Picard, at saka po ang NEDA, yung RP Japan KR2 Grant. We also would like to acknowledge our collaborating uh, units. Ang DA Regional Field Office po, lalong-lalo ng RFO 4A, kasi po ang UPLB ay nasa Laguna at under po siya ng Calabarzon. We work also very closely with our local and provincial government units. We work also with organic farmers associations. Yung iba po dito kami po ang tumulong at organize. We work also with non-government agencies, some of the private sector, with state universities and colleges, and also with DTI provincial offices, especially in the aspect of marketing. What I would be presenting to you would be the following. Uh, we have at UPLB developed some organic crop production technologies, specifically on organic vegetable seeds, organic fertilizers, fermented plant supplements, more commonly known as yung po mga FPJ at mga FFJ natin, microbial inoculants, and some uh, research products on organic pest management. We will also be sharing with you some of the UPLB developed post-harvest technologies, something about organic animal production, R&D, hindi pa po siya technologies, pero pinag-aaralan na. Uh, we would also be looking into technology combinations kasi ang mga technologies naman po hindi, lalo na sa organic, which is a system, hindi po pwedeng isa-isa. Kung maganda ang seeds mo, hindi mo naman wala kang ginawa sa soil mo, wala rin. O pinaganda mo yung soil, ang iyong buto, eh, hindi magandang klase, so hindi rin po gaganda. So kailangan, kumbaga, eh, kompletos rekados. Parang pansit yan, kailangan kompleto ang rekado para masarap. So, meron po tayong ginawa ng mga pag-aaral tungkol sa iba't ibang technologies na pwedeng pagsamasamahin to produce the best effects. We would also be sharing with you some of our R&D uh, services that other uh, interested parties may avail of. And we also would like to let you know na hindi lang po kami nagpo-produce ng technologies, we also have efforts to disseminate the results of our R&D. And that we also would like to let you know that we also do community-based participatory research, development, and extension. This is our way to try to bring the technologies to our farming communities. First of all, we focus on the UPLB developed organic crop production technologies, specifically for seeds. We already have organic vegetable seeds for cucumbers, squash, old seed tau, lettuce, and eggplant. At ito po yung mga pangalan ng researchers who are involved in this uh, project. Si Dr. Rodel Magirang po and his team of the Institute of Plant Breeding Crop Science Cluster, College of Agriculture, UPLB. Binibigay ko po ang kanilang pangalan dahil a product po nila ito, sila ang ating i-recognize at sila rin po ang inyong tatanungin kung meron pa yung specific na tanong. Uh, these are the cucumber varieties. Meron na po silang apat na, kumbaga, eh, medyo advanced na, no? Uh, yung isa nga po yung Urdu, ay is already registered. Yung tatlo po ay to be registered pa rin. Squash. Meron po silang four varieties. Posey Tau. Meron din po silang top four varieties. Lettuce. Meron pong dalawang klase, yung loose leaf at saka yung romaine. Eggplant. Long purple po yung ginamit nila. Although I know meron din po silang 
uh, inaaral na yung mga talong na bilog at saka yung mga kulay green. They also produce these uh, production guides to help farmers but ma disseminate din po yung uh, how to take advantage of the potential of the seeds they produced. Now we come to technologies with regards to organic fertilizers, fermented plant supplements, and microbial inoculants. Yours truly po ay involved dito, and this was funded by uh, DOSD Picard. We developed this G compost. G is for Gliricidia because its main ingredient is Gliricidia, yung pong kakawati o madre de cacao, plus rice straw and banana plant parts. Uh, ito po yung finished product niya at nandyan po yung kanyang chemical analysis. We, this is high in potassium and uh, this is useful for farmers who do not have easy access to animal manures. Sa pakikipag-usap po namin sa mga farmers, meron po mga farmers kasi na walang, walang alagang animal or malayo sa source ng, ng animal manure. So, paano yon? Wala siya magagamit. And then we, we also realized na meron po mga tao na ayaw talaga nila na ng pagkain na ginamita ng animal manure. Gusto po nila ay lahat plant-based. So, ito pong compost na ito ay plant-based. Now we go to the manure-based fertilizers and compost. We are still in the process of uh, doing the scientific uh, analysis or evaluation. We're doing comparative composting and vermicomposting studies using different animal manures. We're doing the chemical tests for macro and micronutrients and heavy metals. We're doing microbiological tests for coliforms, Salmonella and Staphylococcus, kasi ito po yung required kung nag-register uh, tayo ng organic fertilizers. Hihingin po yan ng, um, ng dati po FPA, but now with uh, BAPS na. We're also doing the efficacy tests on various vegetables. Uh, bigyan ko lang po kayo ng counting sneak preview kung paano namin ginagawa yung composting and vermicomposting trials, especially yung counting results. Uh, and ito po yun, we, we have the layering technique of uh, rice, straw, and the manure, plus using uh, banana parts. After one month, introduce na po namin yung uh, vermicompost, and ganito po ang itsura ng uh, lahat ng mga treatments. Small scale lang po. Ito po yung some results. These are the Philippine National, these are the standards from the PNS with regards to total NPK, CN ratio, and organic matter. And uh, magkaiba po ang standards for organic fertilizer and compost, especially in terms of total NPK. So this is our guide. Ito po yung gusto nating marating ng ating uh, mga mga organic fertilizers. At ito po yung results namin. Hindi po madaling marating yung, ano na yun, yung standards na yun. Um, these were the six manures na ginamit po namin. Carabao manure, cow manure, goat manure, hog, kakawati, at saka poultry manure. Kakawati is a green manure. So we did the composting and compared it with vermicomposting. At ito na po yung mga lubak, mga basta values. Yung pong red, yung po yung ibig sabihin ay na, nami-meet niya yung uh, standards. So makakita po nyo, uh, yung carbon manure, cow manure, nami-meet niya yung CN ratio, pero kulang yung kanyang uh, total NPK. In terms of, sa hot manure naman po, mataas yung total NPK, pero mababa naman yung, ibang, yung CN ratio and the organic uh, matter. Ang kakawati po ay... Uh, Medyo kulang siya, kulang na lang ng konti para masabi siyang organic fertilizer pero this is acceptable as a compost at uh, it meets the CN ratio requirement and the requirement for organic matter. Kaya po, ito po yung basis namin na pinili namin siya na pwede na siyang G-compost. And then for poultry manure, mataas din po siya, mataas din po yung kanyang total NPK. We move now to fermented plant supplements. Ito po yung we try to standardize the production system for liquid fermented plant supplements. At ito po yung aming uh, counting results. Uh, normally po ang um, nagmi-mix ng raw materials ang ating farmers. We try to 
Meron pong farmers kasi na sinasabi nila ay one is to one, one is to two, one is to three, ano nga ba talaga? So, ginawa po namin yun, we tried the different combinations of one kilogram of uh, leaves of gericidia with brown sugar and sa evaluation po namin, ang pinakamaganda at, at um, matipid would be the two kilograms of uh, herbage plus one kilogram sugar or molasses and one liter. Bakit po brown sugar ang ginamit natin? Kasi molasses po ay wala kaming makuha ng standardized. Uh, ibang bibilhan mo, iba ang tiklada. May mga molasses po na diluted o adulterated ng tubig. So, mahirap po makakuha ng standardized. So, we use brown sugar. Ang mga practices din po ng ating mga farmers regarding the, the length of the fermentation period. Meron pong farmer na nagsasabi na 7 days, sabi 10 days, meron 15, meron 1 month, meron 2 months. So, uh, we tried to evaluate that effect of fermentation period and using half month, tapos 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 months of fermentation. And then we tested that for chemical microbiological uh, analysis. So after po ng fermentation, kukolektahin nyo yung liquid plant extract. Some farmers use it immediately, some farmers store it. Uh, commercial producers, mas matagal ang storage. So hanggang ilan nga ba talaga pwede siya mas store? So we did the, try to evaluate the effect of the storage period at 1, 3, 6, 9, and 12 months of storage. So now, for, after all the tests, we came up with this product. We labeled it PS1, which improves plant growth. And uh, another product we called PS Max, which improves fruiting. The, aside from the study that we did, there's another researcher, Dr. Manix Pedro of Biotechnology, whom I partnered with to look into the details of the microorganisms. No? And the, their work was to try to improve the protocol for the production of fermented plant juice and indigenous microorganisms. Ito po yung resulta nila. Mas masinsin po yung ginawa nila na they, they did the fermentation formula and they took samples every three days for, the, for one month. No? every three days at tinignan po nila kung anong microorganisms ang nandun. So makita po natin na at each stage of the fermentation process, nag-iiba-iba ang microbial population. So from the first to the ninth, ninth day, ito pong microorganism na to, we sell as species. Tapos ito na naman, iba na naman, and lactobacillus po ang nandun from from day 6 hanggang doon sa huli. Mukhang siya po yung nag, nag marami, yung mga lactobacillus. And meron po tayong tinatawag nilang uncultured bacterium. Ito po yung maraming marami pang microorganisms, iba't iba, pero hindi na po kaya, hindi po kaya ma-identify ng ordinary culture techniques. No? Kailangan po gamitan siya ng DNA fingerprinting. Yung, at ito po yung resulta. Ito po ang, um, I'm, I'm not sure, pero parang hindi ko po alam kung meron na tayo nitong machine na to, parang nagpapadala pa tayo ng sample sa Korea para lang basahin kung, kung ano yung mga details ng microorganisms na yan. At ito po yung lumabas na results. Makikita po natin na ang karamihan ay bacillus at saka lactobacillus. Medyo bibilisan ko na po at binagaywaya na ako ng 10 minutes. Parang kaugumpisa ko pala nga. <laughs> okay, so these are examples of the chemical properties of the IMO using different concentration of molasses. Sabi po ng mga farmers natin, pag gumagawa ng IMO, meron kang isang kilong uh, kanin at saka isang kilong uh, molasses. No? So tinignan po ng group ni Dr. Manix, ito po yung pure na molasses, 1 kilo. Ito po yung 10% lang at ito po yung 20% molasses hinahalo po sa tubig. Nakita po natin na kung, kung 100% IMO, medyo mataas po ang kanyang NPK. Pero, mababa po ang kanyang micronutrients. If you do the, if you use 20% IMO, mababa po ang kanyang NPK, pero mataas ang kanyang micronutrients. 
No? So may implications po yan later. With regards to microbial inoculant, meron din po kaming ginawang product which improves seed germination and plant growth. But ang mas marami pong may ginawa tungkol sa mga pag-utilize ng microbial inoculants na tinawag naman po nilang biofertilizers ay ang grupo po ng biotech na pinapangunahan ni Dr. Marilyn Brown. Maraming marami na po silang products using fun fungi, nitrogen fixers, plant growth promoting bacteria, uh, at saka po mga compost inoculant. Ito po yung mga, siguro po ang iba sa inyo na kagamit na nito, Nitroplast, BioGrow, CocoGrow, Brown Magic, Van Root Inoculant, BioQuick, BioGreen, MicroGrow, BioFix, BioN. Meron pa rin pong iba, pero, ayan, MicroBampa. Meron na rin po mas bago, MicroPlus. So, patuloy po yung pag-aaral nila at meron sila mga bagong ibang produkto. We just move on to organic pest management naman po, technologies. This consists of biological control at saka botanical concoctions. This, this is being, the research is being done by Dr. Pio Javier and his team. I believe Dr. Pio Javier is also making a presentation in another session. And he's working with the crop protection cluster of the College of Agriculture. Ito po yung kanya mga biological control na, na, na pag-aralan. Biological control means the use of living organisms to suppress pest population. Ito po yung mga parasitoids na na-identify na po nila. Uh, ito po yung mga predators. May mga earwig, stink bug, coccinellid beetles. Meron po siya mga microbial pathogens na virus at saka mga bacteria din. He also studied the use of botanical insecticides, yung mga plant extracts against major pests of organically grown crops. Una-una na po yung lemongrass, marigold, oregano, serpentina, luyang dilaw, nami, at saka langkawas. Langkawas is a type of parang ginger siya, parang pero hindi po ginger eh, pero mukha siyang ginger. Uh, sa ngayon po, meron na po silang nagawang formulated product from Langkawas at saka po, uh, first as an emulsifiable concentrate at saka po meron na rin silang ginawang wettable powder. Powder po siya, hahaluin nyo tapos pwede nang spray. No, hindi na po tayo magdidikdik at saka po medyo ano na yung formulated so alam natin kung paano ang kanyang epekto talaga. Meron na rin po silang ginawa na from luyang dilaw, ganun din, emulsifiable concentrate, at saka po vegetable powder. Ganun din po ang oregano. Meron na rin liquid product at saka yung powder na panghalo. Now we move on to UPLP developed simple post-harvest technologies, pang farmer po ito. Ang nag-work po dito ay ang taga post-harvest training and research center na pinangunahan ni Dr. Dormita del Carmen. Cheese flow or katsa as evaporative cooler. Ang ginawa po nila, yung ordinary pong crate. May balot siya na katsa na binabasa. Binabasa yung katsa tapos nasa loob yung gulay. Napaka-effective po ito lalong-lalong na sa mga leafy vegetables na mabilis balanta. Uh, it extends the shelf life of organic vegetables and fruits. Hindi po siya refrigerated, kaya po hindi tatagal yan ng isang linggo, dalawang linggo. Pero yun man lang po na from the farm at ibibiyahe mo sa palengke at saka maghapon siyang naghihintay na siya'y mabili. <laughs> naghihintay dun sa shelves, sa, sa table. Eh, may protection po kahit papano ang ating gulay. And this has already been adopted by Sariaya Organic Farmers. So, na-testing po nila yan with the farmers. This is the other one, collapsible evaporative cooler. Same principle po, pero pang-apat na crate. So, kung magtitinda kayo ng, ng gulay, meron kayo sample na nasa mesa, the rest, pwede nyo nasa loob nito para hindi ka agad nalalanta. It uses local materials. It is used for temporary storage of vegetables. And it 
the produce can be harvested one day before marketing. Pwede pong harvesting mo ngayon, maramihan, tapos bukas mo dadalhin. Para kung madaling araw ka kailangan umalis, today pwede mo nang harvestin. No? Otherwise, hindi ka na matutulog, no? nag-harvest ka, tapos para diretso ka agad i-harvest, eh, i-benta, i-biyahe. This was also adopted by the Tanawan Organic and Natural Farmers Association of Tanawan, Batangas. Now we come to organic animal production and processing. Yung R&D po na ginagawa pa natin, hindi pa po natin nabuo yung technology, pero pinag-aaralan na. Okay, balik po tayo sa organic animal production and processing. Research and development pa lang po on organic feed formulation, cross-breeding studies, uh, production systems uh, studies, at saka po meat evaluation and processing. This is being done by the team of Dr. Mary Jean Bulatao, also of the Agricultural Systems Cluster. Titigil na daw po ako. Kasi naubos yung oras kanina. What is the pleasure of the body? Okay. Willing po kayo mag-overtime? Yes! Okay. Willing na mag-overtime. Okay na? Yun po sila pong boss ko. Okay, so ito po yung activities na ginawa sa Magdalen na Laguna na nag-grow po ng pigs and chicken under organic production system. Yan, so may mga pinag-aralan po nila kung na-compare ang performance ng puti at saka yung native using different formulated feeds at saka ito naman po yung sa chicken. Hindi po madali. Kasi hindi po basta-basta din tayo makapag-formulate ng ang gusto natin talaga. Very limited po ang ating uh, feed ingredients na pwedeng gamitin. Kasi kung bibili po kayo ng mais, malamang dyan po yun. You have to grow your own. So sinubungan po nila mag-grow ng, ng sariling mais, sinubungan din po nila mag-grow ng sariling cowpea, at saka soybean. So nakagrow po sila, nakagawa sila ng magandang formulation, but it was not enough, so hindi may tuloy. So mga ganun po yung mga practical na mga experiences na sabi ko, paano pag ginawa ito sa farmers? So dapat, bago kang mag, mag malaga ng animals, projected mo gano'ng marami ang kanyang kakainin at tatanin mo lahat yun. So parang dapat yata may mag-specialize na farmers na magtatanin ng feed ingredients. Kasi mahirap na ikaw na yung mag-aalaga ng animals, ikaw po yung mag-aalaga ng tatanin mo kanyang ipapakain. Ipapakain sa mga. But they're also utilizing yung sakwa, yung middle part po na gabi. So pag mag-start sila ng magpakain, nagpapatanim din sila ng gabi sa mga farmers kasi nakakatulong din po. At saka, ano po yun, ah, indigenous knowledge yun ng farmers ng Quezon at saka Laguna. So they're trying to build up on uh, the indigenous practices of the farmers. Now we come to technology combinations related to climate change adaptive systems. Kasi po alam naman natin, ano, biglang uunan, biglang iinit. And I am involved in the this uh, research project, yun pong net shelter. Kasi yung, yung greenhouse po na ganong plastic, napakamahal. Kalahating million po ang isang, isang mahaba-haba nun. Ang net shelter po, mas mura-mura. We provided the net at ang farmers naman po ang nag-provide ng kawayan para sa yung net shelter. Makikita po yun sa hindi po yan bumabang ulat, yan po ay yung net. Okay, it protects vegetables from heavy raindrop impact. Kasi kung malakas po ang ulan at dumaan siya sa net, nagiging pino. So hindi po dumadagas sa dahon na ng halaman, lalong-lalo na po sa leafy vegetables. Tsaka napiprevent po na yung tumatalsik yung lupa. Kasi kung malakas ang ulan, tumatalsik yung lupa, tumakapit yun sa dahon. Ang panit na ng dahon. Kung talong yun, ang kamatis, nalagyan ng lupa, introduction po yun ng pathogens nagbibigay tayo. May mga soy for pathogens po na dumibigit doon sa crop at nabubulog yung tanim. It also protects crops from wilting under strong sun. Ang experience po natin, malakas ang ulan tapos susundan siya ng two weeks na napakainit na hindi naman, hindi naman walang tubig. So, pagkatapos siya nabugbog ng ulan, iinitin naman siya, di, mamamatay po talaga ng ulan. But with the net, na nababalance po niya yung nare-reduce niya yung exposure to the sun. 
We also tried this at, uh, ito po isang magandang uh, nagustuhan din ng farmers, yung rainwater collection, tapos kinabit po sa drip irrigation. Simple lang po technology at hindi naman masyadong mahal itong ito. Pwede po ito ma-modify, pwede yung mga drum-drum lang. With regards to plant soil nutrient management, we are conducting the national validation trials for best bed nutrient management for organic rice and vegetables. Ito po yung mga uh, sabi natin na kompleto sricado. Sa land preparation pa lang, we recommend using green manure, whatever is available in the area. At the seedling, at the production of the seedling, at the seedling stage, we introduce microbial inoculants para sa buto. And then at transplanting, we also use another microbial inoculant and burning compost. And then after that, we do weekly spraying of fermented plant juice and burning tea from vegetative to near harvest stage. This trial is being done with 23 partners all over the country. Ito po. Our partners namin, meron 10 RIARCs, isang Office of the Provincial Agriculturist, at saka po 12 SUCs. And very soon po ay pinagsasama-sama na natin po yung data para makita natin kung ano ang performance sa bawat region. Other services of that you can avail of from UPLB ay yung pong analytical laboratories for chemical and microbiological tests. Napapasayaw na ako sa tugtog na yun na. And then we also have the UPLB Soil Test Kit. Ito po, uh, pinapromote po namin sa farmers paano gamitin. We also have the ASC CPC Modified Rapid Test Kit. Okay. So, ito pong rapid test kit na ito can detect organophosphates and carbamate residues in 15 minutes. through colorimetric method. Kaya gagawin po kayo, papatakas po nyo, ipapatakas yung filter paper na treated. Pag nag-iba po yung kulay, uh, positive yung sample. This was done in collaboration between uh, crop protection cluster and the agricultural systems cluster. For the dissemination of R&D results, we have handbooks, originally in Tagalog, and now translated to Ilocano, Bicol, Bicolano, and uh, Isaya. Ang iba po siguro sa inyo ay nakatanggap na ito. We also produce pest management booklets. We also have big charts. Tarpulin po yan na ginagamit po ng ating farmers. Meron po kaming mga videos na pinroduce. We have farmer training series and we have training of farmer trainers. And we also disseminate results, hindi lang po R&D, online. Meron po kami online certificate course on organic agriculture and this is being offered by the UP Open University and UP Los Banos. Kung interesado po kayo, ito po yung website. Uh, ang enrollment po niya, ang, ang bawat isang course po ay nag-uumpisa ng January to June at meron po pang second semester, July to December. We also do community-based participatory R&D in terms of one-farm trials and combining farmers' indigenous knowledge with science and innovation. Another activity po namin yung community organizing at saka linking farmers to markets. Pag minsan po kami po ang lumalapit sa mga buyers, pag minsan po buyers na ang lumalapit sa amin at nadala po namin sa farmers para sila ang mga usap. We promote also participatory guarantee system or community-based organic certification system. Ito po yung sa Quezon. Uh, Dinala po namin sa Quezon yung masipag. Ito po yung magsasaka-scientist na para sa pag-uungkulado ng agrikultura. Isang NGO po na sila po yung nagpupush na uh, PGS. At sila rin po ay isang accredited member ng ICOA. So sila po yung expert na dinala namin sa Quezon at uh, nakipag- uh, partner po kami sa Office of the Provincial Agriculturist at saka po sa mga organic farmers associations at mga LGUs ng Tayabas, Pagbilaw, and Saryaya. At ngayon po sila po ay malakas na malakas ng asosasyon na PGS po sila. 
nagpo-promote din po kami ng community organizing and LGU tie-ups. Uh, uh, kasi nga po, ang technology ay hindi dapat nandun lang sa amin sa UPLB. Kailangan ipinupunod sa mga taong nangangailangan mo. Yan lang po. And ito po yung aking contact details. Kung meron kayong tanong, hindi po alam kung may oras pa tayo para magtanong, pwede nyo na lang po i-email o itawag sa akin. Yan lang po. Thank you.